Welcome to Gamer Ability. I'm your host, Sixpenny, and I'm back with another MLB The Show 21 gameplay tutorial video. Today, I'm specifically going to provide a full tutorial on how to improve pinpoint pitching interface and your overall pitching in MLB The Show 21. Be sure to drop a like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. That greatly helps this channel grow. And be sure to check out I have a full tutorial playlist for this game and more tutorials to go in the future. I have a full best batting settings, best pitching settings, and other tutorials that are likely live as you're watching this. So let's talk about pinpoint pitching. So what is pinpoint pitching? Pinpoint pitching is based on a few different areas. So it's based on three input points. It's based on gesture accuracy, which you can see right there on screen. When I choose a pitch, it's gonna go through the motion. I basically wanna match that completely. I wanna match the speed of the how where the white circle moves. I wanna match the accuracy of the full motion and follow through. So you have gesture accuracy, which is made up of accuracy and tempo. So that told me I was too slow. Um, so that's your gesture accuracy point. The second timing point is your release timing. Basically, you want to release, pull the stick downward as the pitcher is fully cocked and uh, as the pitcher is supposed to release the ball. The gesture is unique to every single pitcher. It's going to change what, when there's runner on base and a pitcher is pitching from the stretch or you have a relievers that always pitch from the stretch, that motion is going to be quicker. So it's unique. So get in there, practice with many different pitchers, especially on your pitchers on your Diamond Dynasty team or the teams you usually play with online. Release timing, let's talk about release timing. So that's the second main point. As you move, move to the top here, you wanna push it down when that circles, the circle is starts out big and get, see how it's big, it gets smaller. You wanna close it when it's directly that outside circle is closing in on the smaller circle if you release the pitch too soon so let me do that let's release the pitch too soon that pitch is going to be high in the zone typically if you release too late let's go after there it's going to be low and you can use that to your advantage and i'm going to talk about that in a little bit now the third area is a direction accuracy so after you do your gesture, as you're pu pushing down, you want to finish at that last point. So you see this blue circle at the very bottom? It moves based on where you put your pitch, left and right. You need to flick the stick down and towards that area if you want to hit that spot in the strike zone. So basically, release timing and direction accuracy are the same. So it's all based on the, the acronym the game uses is GERD. It's all about that GERD, G-R-D. Gesture accuracy, release timing, and direction. So if I want to pitch to the left, I'm going to have to gesture accuracy, pretty accurate. And then I need to push down and to the left. I've spent a lot of time in the t many, and we're talking about hundreds of hours in the technical test offline working on this. So practice, 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 practice with different pitchers. I haven't used Castillo very much in the in the practice. I actually practiced a lot with, with other pitchers because uh, I wanted to pitch with every pitcher in the league. So I didn't just focus on one, but learn the specific pitcher. Now, when you're talking about accuracy, you're gonna get information on screen as long as you have the pitching feedback turned on. So what you wanna pay attention to, this is really important. When you do that first gesture right here, 93% means I'm gonna follow through and try to hit the normal spot. But let's say for example, Let's throw a circle change. Let's say my gesture timing is below 50%. I'm gonna wait low. I'm gonna wait almost to the very end before I flick forward. I do not wanna throw that pitch in the strike zone. So if I have a low pitch and my cutoff is 50%, I'm always gonna throw it out of the strike zone. Now, if there's runners on base, you need to be careful. You do not wanna throw a wild pitch. So basically, say I wanna hit the strike zone, I can always hit fastballs. I'm not going to... Fastball is not a good example. Let's go slider. So 31%. Let's wait low right there. That's a perfect pitch. You do not want to put that in the strike zone. My my area, if I'm 50% or higher on my, ac my ac gesture accuracy, 
I'm going to follow through with the pitch that I have. If not, I'm going to try to miss the strike zone. If you're high in the zone, it's going to be different. So let's say I do a fastball and I'm just terrible gesture accuracy right there. I'm going to shoot early. See, that was so bad. If your pitch, if your accuracy is in 4% or, or lower and everything's off, it you can't, it doesn't matter where you're early or late direction. That pitch is just going to be wild anywhere in the strike zone. But let's say I'm right. I'm so good at fastballs that that's really not the pitch. Let's do circle change and try to get it close, but not so 21%. I need to pitch early so that it's out of the strike zone. If I'm in an up high zone, if I'm inside in the middle, gestures off 41%. I need to pitch more outside. So I'm going to finish outside. Dude, I can tell you, do not just go ahead and finish if you're less than 50%. Because you are likely going to hang one right... It's possible you may pitch a great pitch. Especially if you're on lower difficulty settings. But if you're on Hall of Famer Legend and you just follow through with that pitch, normal, it could get dangerous. So my cutoff, 50% or lower, I try to get that pitch out of the strike zone. 50% or higher, I follow through and try to get it in the strike zone. So overall, when you're looking at pinpoint pitching here, really focus on practice at one at a time. So I start, if I'm looking at the gesture, when I pick that fastball, I am watching that gesture. Okay, I'm seeing it. I'm going to always watch it two or three times when I'm practicing, and then I'm going to try to match it. So my accuracy was off too fast, but I'm over 50%, so I'm going to follow through. I was a little bit early, only 0.04 seconds, and my accuracy was off. But you see the pitch wasn't bad. Now, focus on the second. I'm just gonna focus. I'm not gonna worry as much about my gesture accuracy. Let's just worry about that release timing. Hone in on it. So I was early. So that's just when I'm practicing. But do that when you're first learning. After that, I think it's best to just practice everything at once. So, so really work on following, looking at the gesture, seeing what you need to do, looking at the pitchers at their release point, this, the pitcher offset, the reason I like that view, I talked about in the best pitching settings video that I did, but pitcher offset gives you a good view of your pitcher's full mechanics. When are they going to throw? And that's, I'm watching the pitcher. When I'm throwing here, in my peripheral vision, of course I'm looking at the gestures, but in my peripheral vision, I am looking, see, that was 37%, and what did I do? I did not try to get it out of the strike zone, and we threw right down the middle. So that's going to happen. But I'm watching in my peripherals. I'm watching my pitcher. I'm seeing when do I need to release this ball. Another thing you can do is just wait till the circle is about at its lowest point and just flick the stick forward as fast as you can. That's another way to do it. It doesn't your your speed at the end does not matter. Your speed and tempo only matters at the beginning. At the end, you can just wait till it's small and flick it forward. Wait till it's small wait till it's small it's point and just flick forward as fast as you can that's going to keep you from releasing too early and putting one right down the middle to get blasted for a home run so this was too early i need to throw this out of the strikes on a wait a little late and there you go it's subtle like you don't have to be way late that was 0.8 seconds but if i'm below that's 50 i'm going to go for this i was still late anyways but i'd rather you'd always rather miss out of the strike zone than in the strike zone it's very important that point I said earlier about tempo only being only mattering after the gesture is completed that first part if you want to avoid le hanging them in the zone you'll want to make sure that you wait to that last second now it's different if you have an up high pitch you do not want to be late you would rather miss early than late because if you miss late, you're likely giving them one either right down the middle. If your gesture accuracy is so good, it's going to help everything else. Release timing, direction at the end. If you do a good gesture accuracy, even if you're late, even if you mess up on the other, the gesture accuracy is the most important. So those are the main tips that I would give for pinpoint accuracy. So in summary, get in there, practice, watch the gesture first a few times, learn the gesture, and then go through the motion. Focus on gesture accuracy first, release timing straight down, and then focus on release timing combined with direction, and then combine everything together, and that's how you're going to always practice after you learn each mechanic. Learn it for each pitcher. You want to flick forward basically when the pitcher is at that last point. 
you can wait till it's that cert the outer circle is almost to the inner right there at the end and just flick your stick forward as hard as you can you may end up breaking a few sticks if you do it that way. Tempo does not matter after the gesture accuracy. If you're below 50% of gesture accuracy, that pitch is likely going to be, you know, you do not want to throw that normally because it could hang right up in the zone. So use your release timing to either throw that end direction, to either throw that pitch down low if it's a low pitch, or if it's a high pitch, throw that pitch early up high. If it's above 50%, follow through with your normal motion. Try to get that perfect release timing because even with the 50% release timing, that's really good, direction really good. It still could be a hung pitch, but it's not as detrimental as 50 and below. And learn the gesture for each pitch. There's some tricky ones out there. The circle change is challenging. The splitter is challenging. There's some really challenging ones out there. Now, I do want to talk about throwing from the stretch so let's go to team practice let's put a runner on first and now castillo is throwing from the stretch this is gonna make my time look how much faster that gesture has to be so if we as we watch this gesture let's pick the sinker you saw it a lot look how much quicker it is the gesture is quicker and the follow through it has to be sooner right there So that's throwing from the stretch. You want to practice throwing from the stretch and not throwing from the stretch. Now, after you practice without a batter, my favorite thing to do is go in, but you can do pitching, show batter, and then the batter is actually going to show up. But what I like to do after I do practice that way, I'm going to go into team practice and just play a normal inning. I keep breaking balls low and f fastballs, I could be a little more pinpoint. But the reason for that, I do not want a slider to hang over top the middle of the plate. I'm going to keep those sliders low, as low as I can. Sliders, circle changes, I, you do not want to change up high in the zone. So sinkers, fastballs, are my. I really try to go after the hitter, especially fastballs. It's the, depending on what your pitcher's most accurate pitch is. And then breaking balls, you want to keep low out of mostly out of the strike zone you do not want to put a slider in the high upper parts you know unless you're trying to hit a slider to get the batter slider on the inside and have it fall in if you're a righty or a slider on the upper if you're lefty at the outside upper corner you know there's is cases where i will throw a breaking ball in the upper corner so that I will do other videos focusing specifically on different pitches, when to throw certain pitches. I know this one is mostly focused on pinpoint pitching and how to improve on that mechanic. I'll have other videos coming out for pitching scenarios, uh, what's the best pitch combinations, and how to focus on striking out more batters. So stay tuned for those and be sure to check out all my other gameplay tutorials for this game. And not only that, I have so many I'll have so many gameplay videos coming, including the road to the show. Ryan Gamer is playing some great ball right now, trying to get to the majors. So make sure you tune into that. Live streams for Diamond Dynasty over on twitch.tv slash gamer underscore ability. And as I do play PGA 2K21 as well, on top of Emily the Show and other sports games. So stay tuned for those. Check those out. But it's been a blast. L leave comments down below. Let me know other tips that you have for pinpoint pitching. Is there something that I missed? Is there something that you found helpful? Do you use do you use pinpoint or do you use meter? Be feel free to ask any questions. Post your tips. Create this like a forum post down here so people can come in and ask questions and get help. Uh, I know I still have a lot of to learn and a lot of practice left, but I am loving this game. I am practicing every single day and. We're going to keep improving together. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out tremendously and makes my day every single time I see that. Thank you so much for all the support. You all are awesome. As always, have a fantastic day and I'll see you soon.